Just checking. <laughs> All right, if you're able to stand, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from our last meeting? So moved. Second. Any conversation? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. Aye. Any objection? Chair votes aye. That item is approved. First item on the itinerary is um, item number four, application for conditional use with exceptions by Seneca Capital Partners to create a new mobile home lot in the Indian Meadows Mobile Home Park located at 3636 South Business Drive. Steve, take it away. All right, sounds good, Mayor. Um, Matt Stevens is here from Cedar Corporation, and he's representing Seneca Capital Partners, who's the owner of Indian Meadows Mobile Home Park. And um, uh, there's... Uh, when we get the site plan on the screen, um, you'll see that this is a 70 acre mobile home park that presently has 292 residential sites located off of South Business Drive, uh, just to the south of uh, Sheboygan Chevy and Chrysler. Um, basically what they're looking at, this is phase five at the, what would be the kind of the west and southwest areas, southwest, northwest areas. There's a section of property that is available for development. So if you look that area, if you follow on the screen and the arrow, this is the area that we're speaking of right here that you can see is still left for uh, new units to be put in. So the applicant's looking to install 24 units in that area. Um, the home sizes are expected to be either 16 by 76 or 24 by 48, and management intends to install three to five spec homes, which will either be sold for new residents to occupy or used to order homes for new residents that want upgraded features, and management will control placement of the homes to ensure that same colors and same elevations do not end up next to each other. Um, if you wouldn't mind, if you would go to the pictures, there's some topsoil piles and stuff. Um, there's a couple of topsoil piles, and I'm sure Matt can speak to these, um, that are presently located in the site and probably have been taken over there over the years as the site was developed. As part of the, uh, this area, those topsoil piles would either be removed some, from the site or used for some of the grading. So those, and, and I'm sure you can talk to that a little bit more better than I can. Um, other questions the, the plan commission may want to ask of the applicant as expected time frames as far as the development, anything about the homes or features. And there's just one guardrail. I think, Chad, I don't know if we can get maybe just a very end picture. Um, just there's a, a guardrail over by a, a, a playground that looked to be damaged and just wanted to make sure that that was... Um, you know, completed and fixed in in, uh, in that area. So it looks like it's by a playground and by the streets and the other side looks good, but we'd wanna make sure that that got um, addressed as well. So other than that, staff is recommending approval of the project, the applicants here, and I don't know, I don't think there's anyone on, on the phone for this one. Any uh, additional comments from the applicant? I, I don't really have anything uh, specific. Um, the existing park that is there, it, it would be expanded with 24 lots. We've designed a stormwater management facility on the north end of the proposed development. There'll be a approximately 250 foot cul-de-sac that would be constructed with this project. But other than that, the, the majority of the the new lots front on the existing roads out there. Sanitary sewer and water main will need to be extended to serve these properties as the existing sanitary sewer and water main are located on the opposite side of the existing road behind existing properties. So we'll be extending sanitary sewer and water main with this also. Awesome. Good to see you guys maximizing that space over there. Sure. Uh, additional questions from plan commission members? Uh, Ryan? Yeah, uh, two things. What about the topsoil pile and what is the time frame for construction? Um, the soil piles that are out there right now, they, they were a lot larger a year ago. Um, 
in the meantime, since we started working on the design of it, we first designed to use all the soil out there with this phase and build up the, the land and property out there because we couldn't find anyone that, that had a use for the soil. So in the mean, meantime, we found a contractor that had a use for it. There was one pile of clay and one pile of topsoil. Um, we applied for grading and erosion control permit and, and had that started to be removed. The, the contractor wanted to leave enough out there just to make sure that there was enough material to build up the, the pads and the, the new cul-de-sac. So um, that material will be hauled out if it's not needed. Um, there's a good chance that not much of it will be needed for this phase, so it will be hauled out. Um, time frame, it will be probably within the next couple months. It depends on contractors and availability of pipe and manholes and valving and hydrant supplies. Um, the, there's a long lead time on, on all that information or all that product right now. So I would see within the next couple months construction beginning. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Steve? Um, one of the conditions of approval just does talk about the topsoil piles that they're removed from the site or used to stabilize. So that's just one of the things that is part of the conditions of approval. Okay. Additional comments, questions, concerns? Motions? Motion to approve subject to the conditions. Second. Aye. Motion and second. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. That's approved. Thank you. Great. Thank you for your time. All right, next is application for conditional use and sign permit with exceptions by Blair Image to install a new Ross dress for less wall signage at 518 South Taylor Drive. Steve? Thanks, Mayor. And there's a representative here for uh, Ross as well. So what we're taking a look at is this is the redevelopment of the old ShopGo. Um, one of the things that's happening is the tenant spaces, uh, the store has been split in half and the square footage of the per, uh, signage allowed is 1.5 square feet for each lineal foot of wall length on that wall. So on this particular wall, they have a little bit less square footage. And so they're asking to install uh, its individual letters, interior lit. It's approximately, um, the maximum permit is 185 square feet and Ross is proposing 291 square feet. And so when you look at that and you look at some of the photos and things like that, you'll see that what they're proposing fits the size of the uh, new, uh, 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 yeah, there you go. So that picture, so that's the construction of what's taking place there and that signage will fit in that center piece of that photo. And so to adequately get the signage they feel to um, Taylor Drive and the intersection at Erie, that uh, they're looking for this signage. Staff is not objecting to this. They're asking for the variance to have this size. Um, it's, it appears to fit well with the entrance and the design of the, the new building, the exterior remodeling. So staff was recommending approval subject to the conditions you have before you and the applicants here if he has any additional comments. Any, there may be someone on the phone if by chance that's working. Any, anything else you'd like to add? Not really. There was a Corey Presnick who was going to also talk about the overall development. I'm not sure yeah. who was going to. I, I don't know if. Uh, Anyone on, on the phone? Yes, Corey Presnick's here. If I, if I could have a second here. Great. This is the developer. Okay, go, go ahead. Yes, developer, sorry. Yeah, so I, I just wanted to take a moment to talk uh, holistically about the overall signage plan of the entire redevelopment. We've got a few different applications before you today and i just wanted to just speak to you know sort of the master plan and you know, we did think this through from the beginning of you know this entire shop the redevelopment with uh, you know obviously the two the hobby lobby and the ross just for less revamping the uh, monument sign which you'll hear about a little bit later to you know improve that uh, as part of the rest of the investment into this project and then uh, additional out parcel development as well so uh, i just wanted to make sure that understood that you know, there's a larger context to the overall plan for this and in addition to the initial you know are these individual applications um and we've been careful to make sure that this is a a best in class redevelopment with uh you know a result that will you know, community hopefully will be proud of and is akin to other 
you know, similar projects throughout the country that where these tenants send their trade dress, uh, you know, adds value to the community. So I just wanted to say that, and I'm available for any questions too, if there's any questions holistically on the project uh, as we go into the individual applications. So thank you. Cool. Thanks, Corey. We appreciate it. This is the mayor. Just want to say thanks for the investment and giving this uh, area a little love. So I know um, our planning director, Chad, has some questions as well. Corey, this is Chad Pelashek, and my question for you is, so as you can imagine, we field a ton of questions every day as to when these, are, these two are opening up, and we were led to believe that it was gonna happen sometime in October. Do you have an update on Hobby Lobby and Ross Dress for Less that you could share with us? Sure, yeah, so Ross Dress for Less certainly is now ahead of Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby just slotted this in a little differently on their schedule. Um, we're feverishly, we saw the photos, uh, trying to get through the construction effort in this day and age, which is quite the challenge uh, with uh, you know, supply chain costs and everything else. Uh, it's, it's been a difficult process, uh, but um, we are trying to get done. You know, August 29th is our, our date that we're looking to get done by. Uh, you know, we're pressing for it. Ross desperately wants to open this year. Uh, that's the intent to have them open uh, in October. And Hobby Lobby, it looks, they just had too many stores for this year, so it looks like they're gonna be early 2023. Uh, they should be starting their construction in earnest within the next week or two. Uh, and they've gotta build out everything for them inside. And so they, they don't like opening November, December for obvious reasons for retail, so it'll be sometime early 23. Awesome, thank you. Questions from commission members? Motions for this item. Motion to approve subject to staff recommendations. I'll second that. Motion second. Any additional comments? All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposition? Chair votes aye. That item is approved. Next, we have looking for you guys to open too. Yeah. Would be good. It's pretty soon. <clears throat> I'm, uh, I, I'm not 100% <laughs> Nowadays, sure you date. never know, right? Yeah. A lot, yeah. lot of yeah. things thrown yeah. at you. Yeah. So apologies, but All right. thank you guys. Yeah. Bye. Cool, application for condition of use and sign permit with exceptions by Blair Image to install, oh, I just did that one, sorry. I didn't cross it off. <laughs> application for condition of use and sign permit with exceptions by Creative Sign to install new multi-tenant pylon sign for grow to development located at 518 South Taylor Drive. Steve? All right, thanks, Mayor. I think there might be a representative from Creative Sign that might be on the line as well as Corey Presnick from Court of Development. So one of the things that we're looking at as part of the overall design of the area was the um, pylon sign that's presently there. And you can see in the picture the, the small show, uh, uh, photo of what's there now with the Shopko and the Taco Bell. And so with the redevelopment, the idea from uh, the developer was to try to, since they're enhancing and remodeling the exterior of the building, was trying to incorporate some pylon, new pylon signage, a little bit taller, about 20 feet in height, but then to allow for the tenants of the facility uh, to, to, instead of having their own freestanding signs, to be all on this one pylon sign. It's somewhat simili uh, similar to some that you see at Festival and Meyer, And so, so it's on that Taylor Drive corridor. Thought that it made sense to have them all on one. They spoke about this at the redevelopment. You can see that there's the decorative cap that matches the decorative cap of the building. Some of the uh, 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 brick uh, on the pylons. So they've really tried to tie the um, sign itself from a design perspective with that of the building. So, and the reason that there's the, the variance is that for this is because technically the pylon sign is on the Taco Bell property, which is a different ownership, but um, uh, quarter development and the Taco Bell property um, and the Applebee's have a reciprocal easements allowing for access signage and other things. And so that agreement was um, amended to allow for the sign to continue to be located in approximately the same area, but with this new design. So from a staff perspective, um, we felt that this was a much, much more attractive looking sign and we're recommending approval with the conditions you have before you. Thanks, Steve. Director Pelchek? Maybe you know this question answers, Steve, but why is there four slots on the sign? I'm guessing 
two are the tenants in Shopco, one is Taco Bell, and is it the third tenant that could be in the building? Yeah, I, I think, um, Corey, maybe if, if you wouldn't mind addressing that one. Um, I didn't know if one of the existing, if, if what Applebee's situation was or if Jiffy Lou, but maybe you could address that for us. Sure. Yeah, Chad, the intent would be to have the new out parcel, which uh, you'll hear about Jiffy Lou, uh, take that fourth panel uh, on that side. So it'd be probably on top, Ross second, uh, Toad Bell third, and then Jiffy Lou would be on the bottom. Questions yes. from commission members or anyone else? Motions? Move to approve, su subject to staff recommendations. Second. Motion second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objections? Chair votes aye. That item is approved. Next is item seven, application for conditional use with exceptions by Guggenheim Development Services LLC to construct and operate a new Jiffy Lube at the newly created parcel directly south of Applebee's in the former Shopco parking lot. Steve? All right, um, Jason Day is here from Excel Engineering representing Guggenheim. I'm not sure if there's anyone from Guggenheim Development Services on the line. And then um, Corey Presnick continues to remain on the line as developer of the uh, overall of the site. Um, so what we're taking a look is when the Shopco redevelopment uh, for Hobby Lobby, yep, uh, came in. One of the things that the city had approved at that time was to create, uh, that was one parcel where you can see lot two and lot one. And so basically what they did was a certified survey map to create lot one at the south uh, east corner of the property. And this is where Jiffy Lube is uh, looking to construct their facility. That facility presently is parking lot of the shop go. So you can kind of see at this point, yeah, right in that area. And so that is the area that's being looked at by Jiffy Lube to construct um, a 3,000 square foot single story automotive service center that would provide maintenance to automobiles, including oil change, battery, brakes, engine, filters, fluid suspension, inspection, tires. Location was selected due to South Daylor Drive being a heavily traveled commercial corridor with through the city with excellent visibility and access store our hours are going to typically be eight to seven monday through friday nine to five saturday and sunday hours each store employs one manager one to two assistant managers and six to eight additional employees and the proposed timeline is a march april 2023 start with an anticipated completion date of september 23 um, new building with parking, landscaping, signage, and utilities. Access to the development is through that reciprocal access agreement that we previously spoke about for the signage between the properties in this area. Um, the applicant has uh, indicates that there will be building si si signage and a pylon sign. Um, Obviously, I don't, I don't know if they knew at the time that they'd be looking at the pylon sign as an opportunity, but staff uh, would be recommending that if any type of freestanding sign was to be on this property, that it would be a monument style sign. So that's one of the conditions of approval. Um, they're looking for a couple of uh, variances, exceptions. One is just to have the paving setback of zero feet. Again, this property line abuts that, the existing travel lane. So with those reciprocal easements, they all share this. And um, the other is to a request from the locational landscaping requirements. Um, plan commission may want to have the applicant address the following, just to verify that that access and utility agreement uh, between the parties has been completed. I believe it has, but I'm sure Mr. President could uh, uh, talk about that. But staff was recommending approval of the uh, conditional use permit subject to the conditions you have. And the architecture review board did review the structure at last night's meeting and approve that as well. Uh, question, Any anything else that you like to add? Um, no, Jason Day with Excel Engineering. Steve does a good job as always, and I know there's a lot of information in the, in the staff report that's given out to everybody. Um, I'll just comment on um, just the, uh, the shared access and utility agreements. Those will be worked through um, prior to closing of the property, um, which will be coming up, and we can provide any of those documents as needed um, for a city record if required. Um, other than that, I can answer any questions that you guys might have. 
I believe Kurt Overmeyer is on the phone as well with Guggenheim, um, or on virtually, and he would uh, be available for, for questions as well. I guess I just have a question just to kind of tee up the conversation. Um, I guess what was just the impetus, you know, I, I'm all for outlaw development, especially this is a, an area that we want to give a lot of love to. Um, so I appreciate the step forward on developing um, just uh, uh, this area. So I'm just curious what the impetus was uh, for another um, kind of facility and auto mechanic shop such as Jiffy Lube um, as well. I just there's some perception that we might have a lot of these already in the city. So I guess I didn't know if, if, if you had a comment or if anyone online just wanted to fill in if they had any study or information that they just had that justified their 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 decision to kind of pull the trigger on this development. Mm -hmm. I know Jiffy Lube, they do market studies and they do site visits and they do a regional tours um, for these types of developments. And uh, they pick their sites carefully. Um, and uh, I know this was a highly sought after site. Um, Kurt with Guggenheim, um, I don't know if he can hear. Yes, this Kurt, is are you on? Uh, uh, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Um, just adding on to what you said, Jason, um, Jiffy Lube does do a fairly extensive demographic analysis, market research. Uh, they've had Sheboygan as a target market for some time. And uh, this particular site with the redevelopment for Hobby Lobby and Ross was a, was a huge plus. Uh, in addition, the traffic count and the uh, family income and the population, uh, everything pointed to this site as being really fitting in with their program. Chad? C Corey, could you address the outreach that you did as a developer to try to find other uses for this site? Right. Yeah. And nothing, nothing against Chippy Lube, but, uh, you know, I, I think what everyone's alluded to, you know, ideally there would have been a food user uh, potentially as part of this, uh, this outpost of development. And we certainly, uh, did our diligence, uh, extensively to outreach with all, you know, the, the, group, the names the, the, and brands that would, uh, you know, be creative to the community. Unfortunately, this, you know, the access wasn't quite, uh, strong enough for some of the board boardroom type folks to approve at some of the you know, bigger name brands of uh, quick service restaurants, um, you know, the right in, right out. Uh, and, you know, just being a little off the street, just a little off the mark for convenience based food where it's more of, Oh, I want to stop over here. Uh, it ended up lending itself more to a destination type of service, which Jiffy Lube fits very well. So, uh, yeah, that's the color. We, we certainly, uh, you know, we, we work with Chad to try to try to bring some, you know, what the city would like to see, but uh, fortunately, just the market did not cooperate with us on this one. But I think this is a great addition to the community. Just, you know, okay. for Chad's question, just wanted to give that color. I, I appreciate that, that context. That, that's really good, Corey. Thank you. Other comments from folks? Motions from folks? I make a motion to approve subject to staff recommendations, specifically the monument sign. Second. Aye. Motion second. Any other comments? Seeing none, all those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any objection? Chair votes aye. That item is approved. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Next meeting, August 9th. Mm -hmm. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor of adjourning, state aye. Thanks, man. Aye. Take Take objection. We're adjourned at 424. Thanks, everyone.